When you see your first case of a breast cancer that is very difficult, almost impossible to see on a regular 2D mammogram, and you see that kind of pop out um, in 3D on the tomosynthesis images, you become an instant believer. Um, we want to save lives, and we hope that this is going to help us do that. We had a patient that came in with a palpable abnormality that we couldn't see with the mammogram. The mammogram was stable for almost 10 years, and we didn't see the abnormality on ultrasound as well. But on the tomosynthesis images, we could see a large area that was distorted on the mammogram. We uh, then ended up doing a biopsy based on the tomosynthesis images using stereotactic biopsy, and the area was positive. We have performed 818 uh, combo studies and this quite short period of time we saw three cases of cancer that were detected only on TOMO. And we've picked up about 10 malignancies using the 3D imaging that I suspect we may not have seen with just the 2D imaging. Since we started doing the TOMO synthesis commercially back just a couple of months ago, we have seen five cases of cancers that we would not have seen otherwise. We found five cancers that are stellate masses, that present as stellate masses, and it, they were not seen on the regular uh, mammography. We had four cancers within a week and a half, and two were very hard to see or possibly could have been missed with uh, regular mammography. A woman in her 30s who was at high risk we had a very dense breast that we saw a six millimeter cancer. I sat in a room with my colleagues and showed the case. Not one out of 10 could see the, the cancer on the 2D, but they could all see it on the 3D. We've had several cancers, uh, particularly there was a woman who came in for a palpable lump on her nipple, which ended up being absolutely nothing, but uh, an architectural distortion showed up on her 3D. In retrospect, when you went back to look at the 2D, you could see it, but you always have that question in your mind, would I have seen it? When it's so obvious, just plain as day on that uh, 3D image. It helps you determine with certainly more confidence where the lesion is located, um, and I think it gives you excellent characterization. We found tiny calcifications that we didn't otherwise see, believe it or not. We also found many masses in architecture distortion. Tomosynthese zeigt eine Veränderung in der Brustdrüse deutlich klarer bezüglich der Größe, der Randbegrenzung und auch bezüglich den Rändern. We had another case where it, the woman felt a lump, but we could not see it whatsoever on the 2D image, even knowing exactly where the marker was and everything, and you could see it on the 3D. So it's been literally uh, revolutionary in its uh, scope and what in our practice in just a very short period of time. The second thing is that uh, the normal cases were much easier to be called normal than before. As a radiologist, you get a lot more information, and um, so far it seems that we're decreasing our recall rate. Our callback rate dropped from 9% to less than 6%. I find myself not calling patients back as much as I used to. I'm able to rule out abnormalities that may just turn out to be bunched up tissue. The confidence level to find small lesions is uh, tremendously increased. Tomosynthesis has really changed our practice in that I can just feel much more confident when I read a case that I know that something is just superimposed tissues and there's not all that guessing of, oh my gosh, is that something or not? It's rare in medicine that we're able to affect not only the detection rate for what we're looking at, but also to reduce the false positives. It, that rarely happens. Tomosynthesis really happens. 
For screening modality, um, we've been using it for our, all our populations and uh, for diagnostic purposes we've been using tomosynthesis for select cases. In the diagnostic setting, I think patients that have denser breast tissue or are traditionally difficult to evaluate with the standard 2D images, um, it's, it's been shown to be quite helpful in our practice. We try to get all the patients on the tomosynthesis, uh, but if uh, we have to choose, we look for the diagnostic mammograms, uh, people with palpable masses, or history of prior breast cancer, or dense breasts we've been using uh, the tomosynthesis for. Ursprünglich dachten wir, dass nur die Dichte entscheidend ist und da der entscheidende Vorteil der Tomosynthese liegen wird. In der Studie konnten wir aber zeigen, dass auch bei wenig dichtem Drüsengewebe, ACA1 und 2, wir Veränderungen in der digitalen Mammographie nicht gesehen hätten, die die Tomosynthese aufgezeigt hat. I really thought it would be great for dense breasts and that's what I was targeting and especially with our study, you know, I thought it was very helpful. But as we collected patients with scattered densities and also fatty breasts, I found that it was helpful in those patients too. So I've had to change my belief that it was only going to be helpful in young women with dense breasts. I do believe there's a role for it in all breast densities and for all women. And the initial thoughts were that this was going to make a, a big impact as another diagnostic tool. But I thought that it, its big impact was going to be on screening, and I do believe that I was correct. Uh, tomosynthesis works well across all patients, so we try to use it on as many of our screening patients as possible. We believe that's where it makes the biggest impact, that's where we've seen the biggest impact. Unfortunately, in the screening setting, I do think it's going to take us longer to interpret those images and we're going to have to figure out different workflow patterns to make it appropriate for uh, interpreting in a reasonable amount of time. The learning curve is uh, really very important. We uh, need to have uh, access to cases. We need to do courses. There is no doubt about it. The fact that we do the combo what's called the combo acquisition, that means that we have the 2D images and the tomo slices helps a lot in learning how to look at all those images and depict very, very small lesions. Patients do ask us about the radiation dose. I think it's really reassuring to know that the dose of a 2D and 3D MAMO combined is within, well within the FDA uh, limits um, and is pretty comparable to what you'd get with an old-fashioned screen film, you know, analog uh, type mammogram. Dose is not an issue with 3D. We know that the dose is very low. It follows the guidelines of the MQSA. I think people get confused and they equate mammography to CT imaging. And there's just a world of difference between the two. The benefit is so great compared to the very low dose that there should be no concern at all. You're going to have a lot of people like the early users and the early implementers that are going to be very big proponents of this new technology and they're going to have to go out and kind of preach and teach. I think that we as physicians need to do education um, with the referring physicians and the patients and let them know really what the capabilities that we have and what we can do with this new technology. Every radiologist that I've introduced this to, uh, once they see it, if they had any questions before, they just love it by the time we're through. Personally, I love tomosynthesis, and I would be overjoyed if it would overtake everything. Patients are really excited about the technology and are coming in to get the mammogram and requesting tomosynthesis. We'll have patients come to the front desk and they've just read about the tomosynthesis or they heard we have it and they request it. I do believe women will drive the adoption and they will drive it very strongly towards 3D mammography. I think that it is so important, as, as we all do, to find breast cancer at a very early stage, either stage zero or stage one, when it's basically 100% curable. And the way to find it early, particularly in women with dense tissue, is to do 3D imaging.